everyone and welcome to another Gamecast review. I'm Mark and today I'll be reviewing God Eater 3, now available for the PlayStation 4 and PC. I've always liked the God Eater franchise. It's pretty much a Monster Hunter-esque game with a heaping dose of anime, complete with ridiculous weapons, hairstyles and storylines. I also tend to enjoy the games more than some Monster Hunters as the inclusion of AI companions gives the enemy something else to target without you feeling bad that it's another player. God Eater 3 is the third God Eater game released on PS4, the other two being remastered ports of PSP and Vita games with new content. This marks the first God Eater to actually be developed for current gen hardware, and while it might not show too much visually, the actual core of the game feels media and more refined than before. Things never turn out too great in the world of God Eater, and after many different apocalyptic events from previous entries, the world is still pretty much screwed. The third entry is set in the Ashlands, which is separate from the far east of the previous two games. Here not only does humanity have to deal with even bigger and stronger origami than before, but they also have to deal with Ash Clouds, a dangerous airborne toxin that will kill normal humans within a few minutes based on its concentration. These clouds like to move around a lot and the new ruinous home bases of humanity can't do too much to stop them besides flee. Add in new ash imbued aragami and an even more desperate fight for survival, and there's God Eater 3. Things aren't all doom and gloom though, as God Eater technology has made progress in the form of new adaptive God Eaters, or Ages. New, even tougher fighters. Your created character is an especially gifted age whose worth will become apparent as the game progresses. The main cast and initial setup of the world are quite good, however the main narrative flow gave me a sense of been there done that quite often. Granted, Hunter style games aren't known for having great narratives. After all, Monster Hunter World had the most story of any game before it in the series, and most of that game was about killing a walking volcano. However, God Eater games have story as a fairly large component to their enjoyment, and while they have great premises, I'm a bit tired of this franchise covering many similar story beats. The second game took elements of the first game's burst storyline, while the third seems to take almost the entire premise of the original title. Granted they aren't exactly the same, but I'm sure they could come up with more original developments for a franchise that isn't that big. At least this time around the characters aren't exact copies of the previous game's cast. It's also refreshing seeing new faces. Hugo gets the most screen time though, as he's pretty much the voice of the main character or the next best thing. He's different to the mentor-like characters of Lindo and Julius. He's inexperienced and desperate. He rolls with the punches and takes big risks, and always looks for room to negotiate. I didn't think I'd like him initially, but I soon warmed up, so it's good that he carried the majority of the narrative on his back. The story progresses in a rather predictable way, and while that was annoying in previous entries, I found that the enemy variety kept the game fresher for longer. The basics of God Eater are still here. You have light and heavy attacks, a transformable shield, a transformable gun and bullet editing system, and the ability to devour foes for an added burst of strength. These games have long carried the tried and true Monster Hunter formula of grinding for materials by repeating missions and slowly crawling higher and higher up the monster ladder by updating your own loadout. That's still present here, but much like God Eater 2, the core of the game is a bit easier, so the grind isn't really that necessary until late or post game. Instead of grinding for materials, it's more likely you'll find yourself grinding experience for your new abilities. Partway through the game you'll unlock burst arts. These are a little like blood arts from God Eater 2, and act like an equipable extra move that activate once you're in burst state. These can be swapped and upgraded throughout the game, and can even gain extra effects further into the campaign. You can also engage with fellow party members, granting both of you special stat boosts according to the selected ability. These are a bit trickier as new skills can only be unlocked during the game's new assault missions. Lastly, there are acceleration triggers, which grant even more buffs under specific conditions, like complete so many combos and you'll get a strength boost for 20 seconds. Add in mainstay abilities like Link Burst, which allows the sharing of stored power from devouring Aragami, and each God Eater is a bit of a powerhouse under the right conditions. There's a lot going on at any one time, and the faster pace of God Eater in comparison to other Hunter games can be jarring especially now with so many new features. You'll need to learn fast though, as while I didn't think much of the game was difficult, I still found myself unconscious more than a few times. This is thanks to the great Aragami variety in this entry, combining beasts from all entries plus newcomers, and the new weapon types which took a bit of getting used to. The dual blades are faster than most other weapons and can be combined to form a polearm. They have great versatility and are a great addition. The crescent bladed weapon was an instant favourite of mine though. It's not too slow and it has a good area of effect. It looks cool and its burst artifacts make it even cooler. It can temporarily transform into an axe, and can even add on a sword blade like effect, which is devastating when you find the right window. 
Couple this with your very convenient homing dash, and this weapon type stayed with me for most of my adventuring. You'll need many of these new techniques and weapons too, as this title boasts the largest assortment of aragami in the franchise. Like I mentioned earlier, most of the older game's beasts are present here, and they function in much the same way as they did before. They help fill in a bulk of the game's missions and really help keep the game varied as older titles suffered from repeating the same battle over and over and over and over again. The new Ash Aragami feel like a step up both in terms of monster design and battle strategy. While there aren't a huge amount of Ash Aragami, each one is quite distinct from each other. Not only are they big and they can hit like a truck, but they can devour you and your companions in much the same way you can devour Aragami. Not only does it deal a huge amount of damage and leave you weakened, but the Ash Aragami can also enter a burst state, changing up its moveset and increasing its stats. Furthermore, if someone is knocked out while suffering from a Devourer, they won't get a chance to revive and will instead need to respawn at the start of the stage. They really feel like a threat and gave the game a much needed edge, as I found the new mechanics made much of the earlier hunting easier. Presentation in God Eater 3 is a step up from the PSP and Vita entries, but not a huge leap from the recent remasters of those games. Animations are cleaner, models look better, and environments are bigger. But with all that's going on, it still looks like a high-end PS3 game. I felt like they could have taken it even further, especially considering this was the first God Eater actually developed for the PlayStation 4. That being said, I'm glad the game runs as smoothly as it does, even when on assault missions with 8 characters running around trying to rush down one target. It's also a little hard to see what's going on at times with all the crazy weapon effects and attacks flying every which way. In tight areas, this and the camera become your worst enemy. I like the grim anime look of the game, and while they are few and far between, UFO tables, amazing anime cutscenes always bring the God Eater world to life. The new character designs and ages look good. I like how they put a bit of a twist on the God Eater bracelets of previous games and made them like handcuffs. The entire opening sequence in a prison-like environment really set the tone for the game. However, I think they did away with that environment a little too quickly, as the making your way in a cruel world story, while nice, didn't have the same impact as the initial fighting to survive prologue. But I still like the aesthetics of the double bands and how you could tell at a glance who was an age and what they'd gone through. Character customization feels about as in-depth as it did in previous entries too. However, now there are completely new hairstyles and clothing options replacing the older game selections. While it does look good, I don't really get why so many characters have so much black tape on them, beyond that it looks cool in cutscenes and almost looks like a scar, but not quite. The voice work is quite good, and while some voices don't match a couple characters in terms of their age, I did feel like the main cast was quite well put together. Theme is cute, but I think they went just a little too cutesy in her voicing, making a few scenes a little hard to understand if you weren't looking at the subtitles. The soundtrack is good too, with a good opening theme, great intense songs for climactic scenes, and fairly good area themes depending on the stage. Some of it gets drowned out by all the chaos going on though. I had a lot more fun with God Eater 3 than I thought I would. I always saw it as the anime equivalent to Monster Hunter. It wasn't nearly as fun or refined, but it had good core concepts and the focus on AI and story made it a rival in the monster hunting sub-genre. After playing through the third entry, it feels like God Eater has finally found its footing as a separate entity to Monster Hunter. Sure, they share similar mission structures and gameplay grind loops, but now it feels like both games have distinct identities beyond presentation styles. I'm keen to see where we go from here and hoping Code Vein later this year will nail its souls like systems on the first try. I'd say God Eater 3 is worth a buy. I hope you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and please let us know what you thought in the comments below. Until next time, bye!